welcome to the MBS show, episode number two two four. I am your host Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Dan. Hello, Norman. How are you? Fine, fine. How about you? I am all right. Had a long day, but it's gonna get longer. <laughs> oh, you've been catching them Pokemon, eh? Ah,、uh, that's only one of the things. <laughs> all righty then. And also joining us today is Charlie. Hi, Norman. Hey, Charles. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Fine, fine. Good. Tired because Pokemon hunting, but hey, aren't、yeah. we all? All right, that's the season. Colors, I need to know. Who are you? What team are you representing? I am. I have pledged my loyalty to Spark, and I am proudly Team Instinct. <laughs> <laughs> I I haven't decided yet, but most likely for Valor. Valor, nice. Valor Bros here, yo. <laughs> <laughs> You should join Mystic and complete the circle. Nah, <laughs> Mystic. Okay,、uh, there's a YouTube channel called、uh, Game Theory, and they did the whole thing about what what team was popular and whatnot. And Mystic was the popular one because it's smack dab in the middle of the option selects. So, <laughs> because of how attractive it is and whatnot, so no,、nah, I don't want to pick that. Plus, I like red. <laughs> okay, fine.、Uh, I would pick green because of Bulbasaur, but nah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. But anywho, it's been a while since you guys are here. So the last time we talked, I think that was before BronyCon, was it? Yes, it、mm. was. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So BronyCon, dang. How how was that, man? Where to start? <laughs> <laughs> it was an overwhelming experience. If it has to be in one word, it's overwhelming for me. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, no other con can compare to to、uh, the big one. No other、US. pony convention. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you wanna fight、mm-hmm. with San Diego Comic Con? Oh, totally different story. <laughs> <True> . Yeah, <laughs> but you know what? Let's start from the very beginning. In Malaysia, traveling to the US, how, how was that process for you guys? And I believe then you went early. Yeah, I went slightly earlier. So let's start with you then. Uh, I travel on a very tight budget, so. As I mentioned when I on the previous time I was on this show, I went. I took the long way. I flew to Shanghai. Follow, following that, I flew to New York, and then took a bus to Philadelphia. Eventually, from Philadelphia to Baltimore, it was a long journey. But you know, this excitement keeps you awake because you know you're gonna you're gonna be there at BronyCon, and it's coming up so soon. You just want you know the flights just tend to go by like. As if they, you know, don't, they don't feel very long. Oh, all right. You're full of this anticipation. <laughs> all right. So you said you're on a tight budget. So how was traveling like from here to there? Like the just the carrying of bags and whatnot. Like how was that for you? Uh, previously when I went to conventions like Thai Pony Con, it's been a case of I have too much things to too many things to carry. You know, I go there, I buy stuff in the vendors, and uh. I come back. I'm like, oh, that's not a word. No, I don't have enough baggage space on the plane. So this time, the airline that I booked granted me 46 kilos of stuff to bring. So I was like, yeah, I've I've got plenty of space. I've got plenty of、uh, stuff I can bring there and back. Now this got me a little carried away, and I kind of forgot I only have two hands. <laughs> <laughs> But they have trolleys, right? So they're still good. The trolleys are. Fine. They're like you know in airports there are trolleys, plenty of trolleys, and then you get to New York,、mm. and if you want a trolley, it's six dollars. Oh, ouch! Yeah, trolleys are not free in the New York airport. You gotta pay six dollars just to release the trolley from the queue. Oh, that reminds me of Australia. Like at the airport there, and like oh, we want the trolley. It's like what? I have to pay four dollars. What? This is what? <laughs> yep. In the U.S., in, in New York, it's the same thing. You gotta pay six dollars to release the trolley. And you know you carry so many things that six dollars doesn't seem too bad, and they're really sneaky because you know you get on the train coming out of the airport. Oh, it's free to get on the train. It's five dollars to get off. Oh, really? Now? <laughs> yes, that's the way they do it. Oh, okay, okay, okay.、Oh, But otherwise, it's, it's just too much, man. Six dollars is just way too high. Well, that's how they make their cash. I have a hundred one one other ways to make cash. But I mean, I didn't mind paying that for a trolley. But even then. You know, you by the time you get to the city, there's no trolley for you. You've got to handle everything yourself. And like when I went to Philadelphia, I wanted to go around town, have a look at stuff, and then they told me we've stopped use we've stopped our baggage locker service ever since nine、oh. eleven. You know, for as a security measure, and I couldn't go anywhere. I just had to be stuck in the train station all day long. Oh no! You just had to wait 
for your train to Baltimore? My bus, my oh, my, my next bus. And uh, I don't know what's wrong with the Philadelphia 30th Street station. There's no water cooler. Oh, <laughs> There's no. no baggage deposit. I mean, I enjoyed my share of drinking this new stuff I never tried called Dr. Pepper <laughs> at, <laughs> at Subway. <laughs> And I get out to the bus stop and there's a, there's this little shop selling water and I'm like, yeah, I just need a drink and have some water. That'll be three dollars. <laughs> ah, uh, money. <laughs> oh yes. But getting to Baltimore was such a relief. You get to get there and put down all your stuff and finally say, can't believe it. I'm actually here. <laughs> nice. But you took the bus from Philly to Baltimore on the 4th of July, right? No, 3rd. Oh, 3rd. So you transit to the fourth? How was that? Uh, no, the thing is that I took my bus from New York to Philadelphia on the second, mm-hmm. and then uh, I took the bus from Philadelphia to Baltimore on the third. Ah, and you celebrated the fourth of July, right? Sort of. It rained, <laughs> so you know my, the friend I was staying with got a little confused, and uh, he thought the fireworks were cancelled. Turns out they weren't. Oh. But I mean, we spent it together. We went to Chili's, and they had discount stuff oh. like special offers for the 4th of July so yeah I had a uh, real murka 4th <laughs> of July right there wow to me all those stuff is just uh, stories that you see on TV Let I me... mean I could I could have gone to see fireworks but I see fireworks anywhere I want <laughs> I don't get to experience the murka anywhere I want oh true that <laughs> uh, uh, I got I got a I got an even better experience I'll say oh true true <laughs> Uh, so did you play that game where you're in the US? Um, that game when, uh, is it a firework or gunshot? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but real talk, people have asked me about my trip to the US and what I thought of the US and I said it's better than I expected since I work in the news and we process the news wire in the mornings and it's always somebody got shot in the US. <laughs> somebody got shot in the US. I said, I don't want to get shot. <laughs> and I go to the US, it's not really the case. I haven't heard a gunshot yet. <laughs> Ah, uh, okay. Ah, uh, all right. Uh, so how long did you stay in Baltimore at your friend's place? As I said, arrived on Sunday. I left on Thursday to go to Baltimore City, mm-hmm. where BronyCon was happening. Did your friend follow through or didn't? Uh, he went for BronyCon, but he didn't stay in the uh, Hilton like uh, we did. Yeah, all right. He He's a local, so why, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it's Americans tend to drive a lot because yeah. the cities are spaced out it's not like Kuala Lumpur where it's a lot of things just packed into small space there they have to drive if they want to do something you know when they say oh it's nearby the nearby is a five to ten minute drive <laughs> it's not that bad I'm driving I mean like if, if I say nearby it's a five to ten minute walk oh true that <laughs> uh, but still but still you spent a few days at your friend's place and then you went to the Hilton right yeah and that's where I met up with Charlie Ah. Oh. And how was your experience, man? Like, how was your trip? Mm, I started at night, I think. Yeah. So did <laughs> I took I. a night flight, and um, I transit through Seoul, uh, Incheon, which is a very nice airport, one of the top in the world. And uh, after that, landed in Detroit for a while, about I think about a two-hour layover, and uh, arrived in Baltimore in the late. Afternoon. Ah, yeah. so yes. by that time, Dan was already in his room, right? Yeah, Dan traveled earlier, so I, I came I came later. What was the exact date? I don't really recall. The 5th of July? <laughs> 7th, wasn't uh, it? 7th, 7th. Yes, you yes, arrived on the, the day, day that uh, BronyCon... No, it wasn't the first day, it was day zero when they started giving out the passes. Yes, mm. correct, correct. Uh, I didn't collect those passes. Anyway, we did collect those passes, but um, it was during the queue. Oh. All right, all right. And I also heard from Silver that BronyCon was the QCon. <laughs> the con line con is a general term that I really learned a lot of Americans use for any part of a convention that requires lining up. So even at Otacon, Comic Con, BlizzCon, all the places that involve long queues are dubbed line con. It's an American term. I learned it. Whoop, whoop, to be that line big. con, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, once you arrived, um, did you meet any guests from DHX? 
I mean, once we arrive, of course not. Nobody's there yet, kind of thing, except for a big, long queue of bronies all lined up and some already in cosplay. Wow, really? Mm. Yeah, people cos- cosplaying before, one day before the con already, kind of thing. Oh. It was, you know, even day zero of BronyCon is quite an experience. Yeah, those random people, you know, who just, like, show up and they were greeted very warmly by other fans. It's like a whole magical experience that you see happening right in front of you. It's Virtually truly the no whole of Baltimore. Mm. Uh-huh. The whole of Baltimore becomes BronyCon for <laughs> four days, four or five days, I would say. People are just very nice to you. They, they just, you know, they greet you, maybe they compliment on the shirt or the cosplay or something. It's it's a very nice feeling, you know, like you immediately feel welcomed by a whole group of uh, like-minded individuals. And, mm. you know, you go to 7-Eleven, Subway or Chipotle, any of these fast food shops, and there's bound to be some guy there with a plushie or in with a shirt on. It's pretty much like bronies just take over the town. Speaking of Subways, I remember when uh, I had breakfast in Subway, wow. I finished my uh, Subway and the guy opposite me just offered me like, would you like a cookie? <laughs> he was covered in like a, a bag full of uh, pins and uh, I think it was a Fluttershy t-shirt. Oh. <laughs> so I was like, oh, oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> you took candy from strangers in the oh, US. No. Wow. He, he offered. <laughs> it was, it was a free cookie that comes with the sub, you know. The... <laughs> but dog, here's the thing. Like, remember when they say never take candies from strangers, no. especially when no. they have the red van? It's <laughs> not <laughs> candy from strangers. What happened was a cycle of kindness. You know, you get a free item. You receive something, and uh, I did the same. I filled up the survey, and I got a free cookie, and I gave that free cookie in the end to Dan. Oh, you remember? Oh, yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I mean, that's, so, that's good. You know. That's good. I mean, still, um, folks at home, don't accept candies from strangers. They might have a <laughs> van with free candy on it. Just, just no, don't, please. Oh, you. I mean, it's fair, fair uh, advance <laughs> notice, if we give you candy at P- Friendship Express, please feel free to take it. Yeah, mm-hmm. with a, like if you have a grown adult with you, yes, that's good. If you're on your own, no, don't. <laughs> oh boy. When you guys are at the States, did it make you feel like, wow, I wish I could work here? Are you, are you huh? trying to get us in trouble, Norman? <laughs> no, I mean, like, you know, like, wow, this feels so cool. This feels so awesome. I wish I could work here. And then, like, try and, as you may, like, apply for a job over there when you're home. I don't Ooh. know. For me, it was like, I wish I could eat here. <laughs> <laughs> eat here, huh? Food is cheap, man. Really? I mean, re- relatively All cheap. Right. I mean, like, for four bucks, you can get, like, a whole um, box of granola bars. Wow. Like, and, you oh, know, the, the, the $7, dollar. $7.11 11 pizza. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's right. $7.11. Yeah, like, seven eleven is 50 cent hot dogs, like, that kind of thing going on. Was it 50 cents? There was a small one for 50 cents. Oh, oh the small oh, one. Dollar. one. Right. Was it one dollar? Uh... I think it was the one dollar one, but even oh, $1. for the one dollar one, you can put all the stoppings that you want on it, mm. and that makes it, that alone makes it worth it already. Wow. And you go up to like two fifty or three dollars, they throw in like one of the big gulps, and American big gulp is bigger than Malaysian big gulp, wow. you know, it's huge. Oh, okay, <laughs> Forever, okay. you can't finish it. <laughs> it's like the size of a typical water tumbler will bring around town. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that that sounds so awesome. Like food is good. Food is always good. And you oh, guys yeah. ruined my segue. <laughs> <laughs> no, but re- really, Norman, in all Sorry. seriousness, we wish you were there. I know, I wish I was there too. But <laughs> segueing aside, DHX is looking for 2D character designer for MLP and Equestria Girls production team. So yay! So if yeah. you're, <laughs> if you're good at this stuff, like 2D animation with, uh, I think they're looking for, um, Toon Flash. Oh, Flash. Flash, eh? It'll definitely be yeah, Flash. Because experience. that's what DHX works with. It works yeah. with Flash. I thought they were working with Toon Boom. But yeah, it seems that uh, Flash experience is a requirement. So that's cool. And yeah, if you guys do have the talent for doing animation and animating, uh, do apply. You might be having a good time at British Columbia, Vancouver, Canada. Mm. Mm. Not too far from Baltimore. Yeah. So cool. You, you, you'll be signing NDAs about how I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how I see all the future episodes before you guys can see it, but I can't talk about it because now yeah. you sign an NDA and then you get paid. Yeah, <laughs> but you know it, it's true as you said for Flash. Flash is the bread and butter of animation of character animation, two D character animation. Most of these other softwares that have come from you know the character animation like Victor and Giotto, and if I'm not mistaken, Toon Boom as well. 
most of them stem from the bread and butter of Flash Professional Aids from back in the day. Yeah, because um, if you guys remember our previous guest, Lionheart Cartoon, he was the guy who uh, created the animation for uh, Lullaby for a Princess. He created that and he started off with Flash. And he told me that, oi, that was not a fun application to run. A lot of problems. And everybody knows that Flash crash a lot. So, yeah, that ain't fun. And all the bloody Adobe suite crashes <laughs> a lot. Mm. <laughs> Indeed. Make sure you save every... Your every crashes. Year, so. mm-hmm. After Effects crashes. Photoshop crashes. Illustrator crashes. <laughs> Oh yeah. The safe button is your friend, man. Yes. Before you leave to take a rest, don't forget to control S. Yeah. You stop drawing control S. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But besides that, like you mentioned food earlier on. So hmm. how was the food there? Because um my experience at Galak no my experiences as Buck was quite interesting. Um was, if you went to Galacon without telling us, you got some explaining. Yeah, to do. <laughs> what's with Galacon? Man? I wish I could go to Galacon. <laughs> Who doesn't wish they could go to Galacon? Yeah, true. At least, at least if I went to Galacon, I had the chance to meet with Annelie Heat and Dusty. Mm. Yeah, but still, um, with Buck, my experiences with food was pretty interesting. Um, had Subway. Uh, Subway was my friend. McDonald's too. Um, but honestly, I was a fan of the restaurants, you know, with the fish and chips and steaks and whatnot. Like, I'm a big fan of those. Like, those high, like those fast food restaurants, you can get them locally, but there's a different taste to them. But honestly, I'm more of a restaurant kind of guy. And if you go to another country, uh, trying out both ends of the thing to find out what you like, I, I salute that. You did a good job in try- getting to see, find out what you want. Mm, true. I mean, with my recent trip to Australia, I like, had regular restaurant food. Fish and there chip. are barely any stalls in Australia. <laughs> well, there's some. Like uh, a friend of mine, uh, Twilight Genesis, uh, he and me went to a mall and we had um, Red Roosters. That was pretty fun. Oh, okay, oh, right, rooster, the fried chicken. Yeah, um, they're uh-huh. mostly sandwich, I think. But yeah, um, pretty nice. Was fun and good. With any restaurants, like if I go to the states, I would really like to visit White Castle. I don't know. I so, haven't heard about that one actually. To be honest, never heard of White Castle, dude. I-, I told you I was on a shoestring budget. Oh man, White Castle mm-hmm. is one of the cheapest fast food chains. It's so, considered one of the lowest ranks there. Then, then again, you know, you have to know about how some parts of the U.S. like how. Uh, fast food chains tend to differ between East and West Coast and Central sometimes. Like Sonic apparently is in more on East Coast and the West Coast doesn't really have it. Oh, alright, alright. Because if you didn't know, way back in the days, they had, uh, what should we call this? White Castles in Malaysia. And Ooh, they, oh, okay, they do, okay. they did. Uh, they introduced the square burgers and whatnot. It was pretty f- interesting, but I think they only had one chain and that chain shut down a while back ago. And the... See. Only instance of it becoming really popular was because of Harold and Kumar. Um, okay. Yeah, you remember that movie, Harold and Kumar oh, yes. Goes to White Castle? Yeah. Oh. I have. I think I, I heard of that before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think, I think you know what would be fun to share is that, um, Charlie, you and I, like, most expensive and cheapest meal in the, in the United States is gonna be fun. Oh boy. <laughs> I actually managed to, uh, keep a list of all the food which I spent. That's uh, good. I tried that. It was hard. <laughs> let me let me just go through them quickly and see what I can come up with. Well, um, while he's looking, why don't you yeah, talk yeah. about yours then? The most expensive meal, bottom line, was Red Robin. Oh, really? Yeah, that was $20 plus oh. with, before the tip. Ooh. You know, <laughs> that kind of thing. But how, how's the tipping system work? Like, how, how tip works? You tip based on how much you think you should tip, but you should tip in that sense. Yeah, you know? I mean, like for me, I would give a five bucks. Is that good or but not good? You you choose based. You you can tip as much as you want, but it depends really. A lot of people tip based on percentage in the US. Mm. So in New York, it's usually a twenty percent tip. Mm. Okay. Uh, in in Baltimore, it's customary twenty percent, but you know you can go lower. No one's gonna kill you. Ah, oh, all right. But a lot of the places, the tipping is so ingrained that you can tip via your credit card. What I love about the Pony Convention is you can pay for credit, by credit card and debit card for anything in the vendor hall. Because everyone's got the attachments for their phones to process uh, payments. So they will let you choose. Would you like to tip here? Don't like to tip here? 
that kind of thing. Talking about credit cards, uh, when I was at Buck, uh, most of the vendor halls were kind of cash only except for one. And that was the Buck Legacy uh, D&D kind oh. of game. Oh, and so you met Buck Legacy as well? Oh, yeah, yeah, they were there at BronyCon. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, they had the board... They had the board games and not really board game. It was kind of D and D thing. Game. It's a D and D card game. Yeah. I tried playing it. Good God, it is hard. Yeah, it's like I, I didn't know about it that much. But I bought the I bought the set and I paid with credit cards. Like, oh, I could do this. This is cool. Oh, you have but legacy. Ah. Yeah, and I got no idea how to play it. I don't know which version is this. Like, I think it's the older uh, it, version. It is. It it requires a long time of learning. Yeah. We sat down on the night after BronyCon ended with a bunch of strangers in the Hilton lobby just trying to figure it out. We walk inside, go for battle. First thing, I get knocked out and I'm fainted. I will faint until the end of the damn game. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. Like, <laughs> D&D, like, I, I think our mutual friend, Julita Dragon, he plays a lot of D&D and, yeah, he knows a lot about it and I experienced playing D&D in the hotel room for Comic Fiesta and, Let's just say it's fun. It's a fun game. But the whole setup, oy, oy, oy. Just imagine it takes one day to create a character. <laughs> yep. One now, day. Yeah, have you seen those comics of Pinkie Pie playing D&D and all the nonsense she asks for? <laughs> That's me. That's how I play D&D. It's like, uh... what's going on? You skip your turn. You're fainted. I mean, like... Yeah, I'm afraid you're dragging my body. Just take my damn sword, all right? Just do something with it. It's not, it's not easy. Like you need just to just take the armor, take my clothes if you have to. They give you any extra protection. It's not easy. You need to do a lot of rolling, like perception checks and whatnot. And... I mean, I mean, I was, I was, I was vain that I couldn't roll. It was just skipping my turn all the time. Unless I roll a, like some crap double six or something, yeah. I wake up and it was like, uh. Just take my stuff. You can have it. I'm not going to charge you. You don't have to give me any of the loot. Just take it and go. Can we beat this idiot? Yeah, it depends on the DM actually. But that's another story for another day. So um, the expensive one is about 20. What's the cheapest one for you, man? My cheapest meal has to be a cheapest successful or failed meal. Oh, there's two? The cheapest failed meal cost me 80 cents. It was a mac and cheese we tried to make in the hotel room. Oh, when completely I remember out. that. It <laughs> failed so badly. Okay. What about the successful? Successful one, I would say, would have been the pizza in New York. Ah. Ooh, and it yeah. was uh, two slices of pizza and any canned drink in the fridge for $3. Ooh, that's cool. Very worth it. Mm. How, how big was the pizza? Uh, the pizza was, I don't know, it was huge. It was about 24 inches. Ooh. Okay, that's big. American pizza is huge. You don't hear of things like personal pizza. They don't do that there. Mm, all right, all right. <laughs> and Doc, what about you, man? I think my most expensive one would have to be the hotel food in Ohio. I went for the breakfast buffet. Um, not sure how much that came off because I apparently lost my notes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, hotel food ain't cheap. You know, I know. Yeah, but it was a breakfast buffet, mm, so, so eat all you um, can. Yeah, I can eat all I want. I <laughs> nice <laughs> and cheap. Cheapest, um, probably a one dollar hot dog. Oh, really? No. Yeah, it's pretty good in New York. I, I didn't consider my hot dog a meal. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, you didn't go out like you didn't do something insane like bought a lot of camping gear and try to camp out and oh. try to rummage and rough it up like real. Why men. are you asking I him mean... that? That's the stuff of thing. I, that's the kind of thing I would do. <laughs> I mean, I'm just opening it up to you guys. Well, for me, I rough it up by uh, going from fountain, drinking fountain to drinking fountain and carrying an empty water bottle. You know. All right. All right. <laughs> That was fun. I mean, New York was huge, and uh, wherever you go, um, whether it's a big park or just a small little park, you can find uh, those those fountains everywhere, and it's kind of fun, you know, just hopping from place to place and uh, grabbing some water over there oh, cool. instead of buying the ice cold water for one dollar. <laughs> but an interesting thing about New York is that. It's not just water that's available. Oh. You can charge your phone at U- public USB charging stations on the road. Like, oh, really? there are plenty of them. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, the Vonage ones. And the Vonage ones were really interesting because never before have I seen a country where there are free public pay phones. Mm. Huh. That's a, that, that's a that's a contradiction. Free public phone, not pay phone. It's free. <laughs> <laughs> public phones, all right. Cool. I mean, cool. It, it, and it's not a traditional phone. It's not like those you pick up the receiver and call. It's pretty much an iPad in a case. You dial the number onto it, and you use speaker phones so the whole damn world knows what you're talking about. But it's free. <laughs> uh huh. All right. That's cool. That's cool. So, 
talking about roughing it up and camping and whatnot, apparently that the uh, Equestria Girls Legend of Everfree Brewery and DVD pre-orders are now available on Amazon. I exactly. think. I know! I like getting good. <laughs> and Amazon, man, Amazon. I think so, it's Amazon. I think it's just available. No, I, mean, I mean, like, it, it's Amazon. Like, when we're the US people talking about Amazon, like, it's the best damn thing. Because they have things like Amazon Prime. You order today, you get it tomorrow. I mean, that, that is not their best. Like, they have the Amazon grocery on the Prime. You order it, two hours it arrives. <laughs> That's cool. Um, but still, um, this Blu-ray and DVD set won't come out till November 1st. But now, you know, I look at it, I don't think I need to pre-order it if I'm in the US. It's like, oh, it's out, I'll get it tomorrow. Yeah, true. But still, um, available for pre-order. I got no idea what bonuses you'll get. If you don't know, um, the Ford Equestria Girls movie would be... In a camping setting, yay, our hero Sunset Shimmer and oh. Saitwai will be there doing campy stuff. Mm-hmm. Woohoo! Yeah, right. What do you All get movies? when you pre-order like some deep Everfree Forest DLC? <laughs> I thingy? don't know, but funny thing, Everfree Forest is there. <laughs> okay. Uh, like, mm. And yes, Doc, we are on four movies now. Ain't that cool? That's like for it. <laughs> That's like so long. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> Forever, <laughs> but I don't know. I, I seen some of it, and I do like. I do like it. it. It's pretty interesting. I can't wait to see the full movie. I mean, the the full movie is coming out uh, in October, and it's going to be a direct to video release, no, right? They're doing these two things where it's going to be on the air on Discovery Family, and then Blu-ray and DVD on November first. So that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, the the Discovery Family version is going to be a bit cut. But other than that, nothing much really. So, hey, I, I can't wait for this one. I, I do like the Equestria Girls movie. They're much fun. Hmm. I can't wait for the music. Oh, yeah. Honestly. Music stuff's going to be there too. So that's going to be good. And honestly, can't wait for the 2017 movie that's coming out, right? Like, the, Oh, yeah. I can't everybody's wait. I can't been wait. asking for I it. High expectations. Yeah, Simon's going to be crazy. <laughs> like, wow. And honestly, if the movie comes out here in theaters, we need to do a meetup and watch it. Oh, oh yes, yeah. we do. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Of course. Certainly. If it's an IMAX, like, yeah. Book the yeah. hall. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's gonna be just insane if we do it. But still. I'll, I'll look, I'll look into that, you know, like booking halls and stuff if we, if it does get screened here, because that'll be some, that'll be a landmark. Because event. if I do remember right, Gem and the Holograms did show here for a bit. Yeah, especially these international screens kind of thing. They may have very limited screenings, but make the best of it if it comes. Yeah, I'll I'll fly down if I have to. <laughs> down? Yeah, you know, from JB to KL. You mean up? Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, directions relative. Up is down, down is up, Norman. <laughs> yeah. But talking about flying, so you guys are still in the US. So how was how was it there? No, I'm not. I'm back home. I know, but I'm just talking about memories. <laughs> okay, mm. fine. <laughs> yes, we did not attend one con, but we attend two cons. Ah, I see. So what was the second con? It would Columbus, be truck Ohio. Con. Yeah. So how was that? Like, if I did remember right, it was such an insane con. <laughs> We're talking about BronyCon or TrotCon now? Like, TrotCon. You know? But uh, we mm. finished up with BronyCon. Um, swag, what did you guys bought? Swag, swag. Oh. I told myself I'm not going to the vendor hall. <laughs> until yeah, the last I day. went to the vendor hall <laughs> on the first day. <laughs> and he brought me there with him. So. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh. I just wanted to see all the cool stuff, you know? I mean, it's massive. You don't get to see that back here in home. I mean, I wanted to prevent myself yeah. from seeing all the cool stuff in order to stop like having this thought at the back of my mind that's going to be like, I want that. Should I go there? Nah. I'm going to no. go for this panel and I'm going to stick to my schedule. But I want that! <laughs> uh, I can just remember my theory about spending in Australia. It's like, nah, mm. I, I I got what I want here. I don't need to buy stuff. Suddenly, I bought... You stay out of EB Games! <laughs> no, I went, I went into EB Games. I bought an Overwatch t-shirt. I bought a Rio <laughs> Mevo figure. Oh. I bought... Oh, there oh, you God. go. <laughs> I went to GameStop like six times in the US. It was like every time I walked out, I had something in a plastic bag. Like, ah! <laughs> so then, uh, so what about you, anyway, Doc? What did yeah, you want? I got some prints over there. Um, standard A4 prints. Um, I think the, the, the biggest loot which I liked was the wall scroll mm. uh, of Luna. Yeah, we, we don't get wall scrolls here. Yeah. It was nice. And, uh, what other stuff? Uh, let's see, prints, um, a badge or two. Oh, regarding the badges, um, 
a funny thing happened was like there was a little trading uh, thing going on mm-hmm. in, in Ronicon, you know. So uh, no cash allowed. You just bring your stuff and uh, you, you trade stuff. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> and amazingly, a lot of people were giving away trading cards and CCG cards for free. Yeah, because they don't want to play that. <laughs> that's not a word anymore. <laughs> yeah, and smash. You got a very <laughs> good point <laughs> there. <laughs> Because the people, who, the people who play CCG, they come to BronyCon, they go straight to the card room, and they play CCG for almost pretty much the whole con. Oh, and those who, right. and those who don't want to play it anymore, either like, hey, check, take a look through the box, see what you want, take it, it's free. <laughs> yes. Like, why even, right? Like, why even you spend all those? T- yeah, I, I have been that boat before, so yeah, I, I understand. <laughs> but still, you're missing out. Like, if you go to BronyCon, you're going for the whole experience. Just, I agree. just, just don't spend it at the one spot because you're gonna miss out on all the awesome things. But I mean, I it, it 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 depends on what floats their boat. If somebody yes, wants to play cards correct. and they're gonna have a great time doing it, there are some people who are not interested in certain things. Yeah, true. But mm. I, I I guess I'm speaking from a M- Malaysian talking about how awesome BronyCon is because the feeling that I get is like, let's go to a con and let's experience everything. Like I want to feel the whole. Scenario. I want to meet all the people I talk to. Jack's Blade, uh, AC Race Best, Saber Spark, Dr. Wolf, The Pigeon, and a lot of people. So, yeah, those things, I-, I want to do that and get to meet all the celebrities, even though you need to wait in line and pay for autographs things. But most of them. Oh I, boy. Most <laughs> of them, yes, true, but from my experience, I went to BuckCon and I got to talk to Heather Breckel. Heather Breckel is mm. the colorist for the My Little Pony comics. We we talked to her as well. We also met her, yeah. What? Heather Breckel? Not at BronyCon, oh. in, in yeah. TrotCon. Oh, TrotCon, yeah. she was at TrotCon. Oh, uh, yeah. we got a picture. Um, I'll send you a picture, Norman, right. of what she drew for us. Okay, but uh, <laughs> talking about Heather, uh, I met her and I'm in contact with her regularly talking about Fire Emblem. So, yay! <laughs> Oh, we actually covered a lot of stuff already. You mentioned Dr. Wolf. He was the first celebrity, um, community guest, which we actually bumped into. In or Bronicon. famous dude. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, know. And you know, he was like standing out amongst the crowd because he was his wife, uh, he was with Carrying his wife his and they were both carrying huge plushies of their OC books. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so like, the, the, the funny thing is that when I was walking around, I saw the name tag of Mrs. Wolf and I was like, He's close, so. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, we're in this huge thing? convention center. <laughs> going from what Charlie said, there were people like really young kids going up, are you Dr. Wolf? Yes, I remember that. <laughs> and they were like totally swamped. Yeah. Like, oh. Oh and then he God! said like, yeah. okay, it's going to be like this the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun. I mean, they really look up to him, you know? Uh, he's kind of like a big deal to, to, to the kids. Here's what I noticed when years pass, where you have uh, Tommy Oliver and DG Bro, they were kind of the brony guys back then. And then you got Mando, and then you got Gabe. And then when you move on now, you got Wolf, you got the Pigeon, and then you got your other analysts or celebrities nowadays. So it's kind of interesting to see how things change and how people react to certain people. And mm. honestly, you're, ref- you're referencing most of the uh, analyst anarchy videos, right? I'm just by memory. I'm not. I mean, the the the, the ones who are involved in that, like Keyframe and uh, Lightning Bliss and KP and these people. <laughs> if you're referencing them, I'm just referencing from what I know. I mean, uh, just to get on the same page, yeah. kind of thing. It's just the brony celebrities, quote unquote. Okay, because fine. If you want to stand out there, either you show your face a lot, or you have your OC on, and with Silver Quill, nobody really knows how he looks except for his unique character, which is the Hippogriff. Ah. Then you can oh. automatically say, ah, I know who you are. And with Dr. Wolf, he shows his face a lot, so you get a general idea how he looks. And he has the plushie to, cut, to top it off. Yeah, so <laughs> there's that. And I think if we go next time, we should bring our own thing. Like, we should have a Malaysian flag flying around. Yeah, this oh, that's is something that idea. we that's should have idea. done. Because at the closing ceremony of BronyCon, the BronyCon has hired people to do, you know, these cameras that would have, uh, that would project the screen onto bigger, 
the screens for people at the back of the hall to be able to see. Mm-hmm. And a lot of bronies from their individual communities and some like coming as far as from the Czech Republic brought their flags and their banners. Mm-hmm. And as they put it up, cameras would focus on these things and you get to see the diversity of the people in the hall through what they're holding. Yeah, oh, yes. that's cool. And, and flashies. Yeah, <laughs> also, we need to print shirts like the MPS show shirts. Oh yes, yes. But maybe not MBS show shirts, like, that will be e- egotistical of me. <laughs> so. Well, now put the MBS show in the back shirt stuff. <laughs> yeah! The MBS show stuff will look good, but nah, that's just e- egotistical for me. But, um, talking about conventions, like, you went to two and Trotcon was the craziest, if I do understand right, and a lot of Shrek was spent. So, any crazy <laughs> moments that you can share about conventions? Trotcon was the first time I attended a rave, really, in its full capacity. Really? Because, no? because oh. previous raves, I never really attended them. In, at BronyCon, I was, at, I was there on a press pass, and I had to do my fair share of filming, running around, and while the rave was going on, they had panels. It was, you know, running back and forth, up and down. We had to prepare for our panel, so we wanted to speak oh. early kind of thing. I did, and um, on the second night on BronyCon's rave, I actually had to go and resort to the uh, news reporting outside because of the protest in uh, Baltimore City. Mm. And even back home here at Canterbury University, at the Friendship Express, these raves, I'm either part of the team that's organizing it, part of the logistics, or taking video and stuff. TrotCon was the first time I decided, I'm going to just drop everything and immerse myself in this rave. And I had such a good time. Ah, and you were in pajamas with pillows. Yes! <laughs> Doing a really silly little out-of-bed dress up. I actually just, I actually took the hairspray and just messed up my hair completely and it looked like I just jumped out of bed for this. <laughs> <laughs> so, Charlie, what about you? Your craziest it, experience and stuff? It was pretty much the same in TrotCon, I would leave, but I was alternating between attending that rave and uh, going, trying out the dance machine in the games room. So, you see, TrotCon and also in BronyCon, they had this little, uh, uh, DDR wooden panels where you can actually, you know, bust a move on them. And to pony music. Well built. Yeah, and they're all pony music. So, it, I mean, I haven't actually seen this sort of thing before, so. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's called Trot Mania. <laughs> <laughs> Was it? I think, I think that's what it's called. I think so, I think so. Um, it's basically DDR with pony music, and, uh, I think the whole, the whole package deal is called Trot Mania. <laughs> So, yeah, you know, alternating between dancing on a little, little wooden panel, uh, to the beats of pony music and down, and, and going on the race floor, it's really tiring, but it's also, uh, a lot of fun. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's just crazy. You know, you have to be there and then you can immerse yourself in all the sights and sounds. It's yeah, a pretty I, I unique can, experience. I can, I can just imagine. I- <laughs> For me, my craziest con moment, back con 2013 or 14? I think 14. Uh, for me, it was just walking around Manchester alone. Huh? That was great? <laughs> think about it. Like, I just walk around Manchester, take, took photos, like, just on my lonesome, without any friends around. And that's dangerous! <laughs> Yeah, in a first world country, um, it's yeah. definitely not as dangerous as. But still, yeah. But but still, you know, you you got you're in the country that invented what looks like the TARDIS right now. It's kind of like <laughs> yeah. you're pretty safe. Well, one could hope, but lucky, I nothing bad happened to me, and I got to look around. It was pretty interesting. Took photos. But now that you, now that you've brought that mm-hmm. up, I'm curious to ask how transformed was Manchester? Like as I said, uh. BronyCon almost transformed Baltimore into a town full of bronies. How was this in Manchester? Um, here, here's the thing. When BuckCon was happening, at the same time, there was the Pride Parade. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we also had conflicting events. Like when BronyCon was happening, the ball game was on. Yeah, but here's the thing. The Pride Parade was really confusing for some people who attended because, you know, bro- bronies are just a bunch of guys who like my little ponies and stuff and suddenly you got the pride parade <laughs> okay so it's like hmm interesting <laughs> but nah it was pretty fun they actually section off like the pride parade should be there so people don't shank a person so that's good shank a person <laughs> yeah they, they, they did they did very very good job and you know hats off to the BronyCon team for 
keeping uh, an eye out because there was there was a protest in fact on Saturday night at uh, right outside the Baltimore Convention Center against uh, police brutality. Oh. So yeah, you have that. You have the ball game going on, and you have Brony Palooza going on downstairs, <laughs> and panels still going on upstairs. Wow. It's Baltimore was busy, busier than any place I've ever seen in my whole life. Wow, that that sounds just just awesome, and it's. I wish I could have joined you guys and experienced the insanity which is the American convention scene. Bottom line is, have to you know, say that you know the best part of the con will have to be the people, mm. uh, the people that you meet, the stuff that you see. They're just so friendly. Even at the closing ceremony, Andy Price uh, he said that um, the best part about coming to Brony conventions is uh, the staff who are just so friendly and uh, so helpful. And he said uh, that uh, whenever that he goes to an other cons, he just wish he could pack up all the stuff in a little box and, uh, you know, bring bring them around just because they're so nice. Yeah. Not, not just that. Now that you mentioned Andy Price, I remember this. He said that he actually gave us a little bit of a name drop there. It was like, I'm glad to see so many bronies from all over the world and he named so many countries and Singapore and Malaysia were in that list. Yay! <laughs> Specifically for us, he never came to Malaysia. Oh. <laughs> it's like when he said Malaysia, I was like, yeah! <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> uh, I wish there's a convention in Southeast Asia, man, like really close to us where we can just enjoy. Like, oh. If you're impatient, there's Friendship Express coming up in November. I'll be there. Hey, if you can wait a little longer next year, one week after BronyCon, mm-hmm. we also did this announcement at BronyCon uh, during our panel that we'll be doing Project C BronyCon. Uh, what's this? A new convention. Now that you see the Friendship Express that's happening in November, will be the twelfth Pony convention in Southeast Asia. Yeah, it's come that far. So, Speechless? <laughs> yeah, it's it's it. When I did my calculations, I saw that metric that we have had 12 pony conventions in Southeast Asia. I said, we've had so much more than we think we did. And to be honest, the concentration of brony conventions by region here is really high. The US is so huge and they have so many pony conventions, but it's such a huge country. You look at Southeast Asia, it's a smaller place. There's conventions in nearly every country, save for Brunei and Indonesia. I thought Indonesia had their own cons. Uh, not a pony convention. The Brony group has presence at local conventions, but they don't have a pony convention. The thing is that the bunch of us who did things, uh, um, a friend from the, the Philippine pony convention group, as well as me and Charlie and the chair of Thai Pony Con, we got together and we said that it's about time. Could we put all of this together and start to, you know, push strength in numbers here? Because Brony Con to us was also a study trip to look at what is this convention experience? What is the BronyCon experience. Until now, I'm still trying to calculate what this experience is because it's so big. People ask me, Daniel, why don't you have any of this post-con depression? I said, I don't have post-con depression. I have a post-trip depression. (laughs) Because as Charlie said, it's about the people. And the people there made the experience so much more immersive because TrotCon ended on Sunday evening at 6 o'clock. But everyone was still hanging out and having fun up to the next day. Wow. It was... it's a very good point, which we have to highlight. Because TrotCon is smaller, it's more of a social con compared to uh, BronyCon. BronyCon is big, explosive, huge event that is everyone come and have fun. And it's, you know, the LionCon experience <laughs> as well. You spend time lining up to talk to celebrities. And TrotCon, there were lines as well, but it wasn't as bad, I would say, as BronyCon. I mean, <clears throat> bad's, a ba- bad's not the right word. Not as... Um, you know, not as much waiting involved. Mm. You know, you, you make friends in the line when you're lining up, but at TrotCon, pretty much the hotel became, you know, it was held in a hotel, held in the Crown Plaza Columbus North. It became part and parcel of the convention. Mm-hmm. The, a- almost every single meeting room was convention stuff going on. And, you know, after the convention on Sunday, Swimming pool was pretty much the convention. Con- they continued there. <laughs> they call it the pool con. Pool yeah, con. The pool con. Pool and con. eventually, yeah. And eventually, when they in a hotel chased us out of the pool, we went to the lobby and continued having continued having our little post con con right there. Oh <laughs> uh, wow, that's just so awesome. And you guys are trying to bring that experience to Asia now. We can't control what happens after a convention. <laughs> so, uh, but 
Real talk, at BronyCon, during our panel, the Asian delegation panel, we were supposed to have four panelists. We were supposed to have four people, uh, Charlie and I from Malaysia, we were supposed to have Nighty from Indonesia, and Buckweiser from the Philippines. And what happened is that Buckweiser had his US visa denied. Mm. He could not come into the United States, and this was his <laughs> second attempt. Two times not being allowed into the States, it was a big blow to him. But it also made us think about this. There are some people who want to be at BronyCon who are willing to put aside the financial discipline and the time and the, and the effort to be at these kind of conventions. And there are factors beyond their control that really they can't do anything about that are in the way. We're not saying let's take the convention experience out of America because, hey, Buck does it. Uh, Brony Days does it. Galacon does it. But... There are people in this region, we, we gotta remember, Southeast Asia is almost a bunch of mostly third world countries and developing countries, with the exception of Singapore. So people here are generally of a low, have a lower purchasing power than that of those in the United States or in any other uh, Western country. Therefore, one of the goals is this. I would like to ask, let me, let me push this straight to you, Norman. Mm-hmm. Would you attend BronyCon if you lived five minutes away from it? Yeah, totally. If it's just five minutes away, I'll just need to buy the tickets. And I home is just five minutes away, so there's no uh, problem. Project C PonyCon, which we're introducing, one of the things that I am aiming to do is to look at Southeast Asia and people like you who have said, yes, I would do this if it was five minutes away. The idea is not to say Project C PonyCon is going to be five minutes away from you, but if you were to go to BronyCon, you first of all need to put down the ticket price. Mm-hmm. And the general admission three-day ticket to BronyCon is 70 US dollars. And if you were to be going to the United States, you know, you would need that visa. And that visa, the application cost, the only country that doesn't have to pay for a visa in this part of the world is Singapore. But anyone else will need to fork out $160 to pay for that visa. Now, these two form, you know, you add this together, you get 230 US dollars. So I, I'm one of my biggest things that I'm trying to do is can we fit an entire convention budget from airfare to hotel to admission and everything into that little bit of money? It's not that much, and it's the basic amount that you must commit for BronyCon. Basically, if I do remember right, uh, the trip from Malaysia to the States is already going to cost me about 10k. So it depends how you travel. True. You know, if you travel like me, it's going to cost you probably half of that. But still, it's a lot of money. Mm. But can if, if it's possible to tone down a, a convention experience to a way that people can have access to it. The key, the key here is access. The key here is being able to give those who are here in this part of the world a chance to experience what would be close to BronyCon. So we looked at all the conventions here. No, none of these conventions have exceeded. 500 attendees except Thai PonyCon. Mm, all right. And Thai PonyCon has done it two years in a row. That's also part of why we selected Thailand to be the home of Project C PonyCon. Project C PonyCon is happening 19 to 20 August 2017 in Project, in the Prince Viwat Hall in the Thai Summit Tower, the same place Thai PonyCon has happened. Because Thai PonyCon had an excess of 700 attendees, which is a very impressive figure, the highest in the region. And we ask if we put together these numbers of everybody, we can have something substantial. TrotCon's announcement was at least 850 people this year. Can we have something comparable to TrotCon? Or perhaps move up a little bit, a fraction of BronyCon? And since uh, the idea for C-PonyCon is going to be at uh, Thailand, right? So that will be pretty affordable, Thailand is very affordable. We've done calculations and soon you'll be able to see our panel video that was done at BronyCon where we helped Americans who were watching it calculate how much it would cost for them to attend. But airfare aside, we calculated the median airfare would be about $870 for an American to fly to Thailand. That's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. But cut that all out. You will, you should be able to experience the full convention for, for 350 US dollars. Like, food, travel, everything like that. And we're talking about doing this in, st- in, in a comfortable way, meaning stay in a hotel, have uh, an Uber X or a Grab car driver, you know, ha- have, uh, en- have an enjoyable, comfortable convention experience. But if you pull it down to the shoestring level, 
where you stay in a hostel and you use motorcycle taxis or public transport more often, this figure goes down much further. Mm. So basically, it will be affordable for Americans and also Asians who are interested in this. Uh, it's not just to say affordable. Uh, a lot of the, one of the things about C Ponycon is that C stands for Southeast Asia. Mm-hmm. Now, it's not just a convention for Southeast Asia. We want to put it as it, as this. It will be a convention by Southeast Asia. Put together by people in this region who are involved in brony projects, who are involved in pony conventions in their local communities. If we were to tell someone in America or in the West, you know, come for C Ponycon, they say, we got BronyCon, why do I need to go there? Hence, this kind of brings us to our agenda of, of Project C PonyCon, where we are looking through the agenda of every single convention in the region, uh, Philippines Convention, the Clousdale Splash in Singapore, Cantemere University in Singapore, a Thai PonyCon, and uh, the Friendship Express over here at home. And we took out the best and you know, everything in there that was popular or the best or more successful, Those, especially those panels and those uh, items that got you know, very good feedback, such as in the Philippines, Project Dust Shine, which is their local, uh, it's something like a podcast. They do this uh, radio drama thing on YouTube. They record, it's also something a bit like a uh, post-episode analysis. They're, they're, they're starting to structure it a bit more now. That was received very well because they also play things like Who's Line, oh. which is very popular. In fact, BronyCon is very known for it. It's, if I'm not mistaken, it kind of started there. And the Philippines added their own little flavor into it with, you know, their little inside jokes and their, you know, the jokes that, you know, p- contain partial Tagalog, which is the Philippine language. We want to bring this kind of experience that people have and put it into Sea Pony Connors, making it not just a, conve- not just, you know, any other brony convention, but this agenda you see is like, you're going to see the best of Southeast Asia in one convention. And this sounds pretty cool, like getting the best of the best and putting them all in one place. And not a pony convention for Southeast Asians, but by Southeast Asians. And that's pretty cool. And I'm guessing it ain't going to be cheap, right? Running a convention is never cheap. Mm -hmm. As Purple Tinker, founder of BronyCon, has always said, you want to run a convention, have a lot of money, prepare to lose it. True that. Bottom line of running any convention. And uh, just to sidetrack a little, meeting her at BronyCon was a very inspiring moment to meet the person who inspired pretty much Brony conventions around the world. Uh, True that. And also, we did get a chance to talk to her. And that was pretty cool. Yep. It was getting to see her because, you see, she inspired BronyCon, which in turn inspired conventions in Europe, Asia, and then Australia. And then we went to BronyCon to see her, and it's pretty much completing the circle. <laughs> nice. So, uh, if I do understand right, it's like you guys are going to do a Southeast Asia Brony convention. And good luck, man. Like, what could the public do? Like, what could the public do besides um, shouting things out and getting more notice on the medias? Getting people to know about this is really important. Now, while we have an announcement on Equestria Daily and also the Cantalot Times, we want to push this out and get more places to hear about it. So tell your friends, tell everybody about this convention because it's not limited to anybody. There's no limit in who we're looking for. There's nobody that we're saying cannot attend this convention or must not attend this convention. This convention is not for somebody. It's by us. It's for the world and anybody who wants to be a part of it. So... By all means, it's for go out there and tell the world. And also, I mean, I hate talking about money, but we're also raising funds to help to try to bring this convention to another level. Now, the commitment for Sea PonyCon is there. We, we're we doing this convention. It's happening. Mm-hmm. But it can be better. This convention can be brought to even better levels. And we need some help for that. And how can the public do that, man? You can go on over to fund.cponycon.com. You can find that link in the show notes. We are fundraising on Indiegogo. We're hoping to raise 5000 US dollars to help out with the event. Mm. It's not that much. We're hoping to raise that amount of money to assist offset our personal expenditure uh, in the event. Now, if you want to pre-book your ticket, ticket booking is not open yet. But if you want to secure your place in CPonycon, it's 30 US dollars to pre-book your ticket on our Indiegogo campaign, which is at fun.cponycon.com. And it's got other perks as well. So if you're hearing this and you 
maybe you can't travel, you don't have a passport or something like that. But you have something you're doing. You're doing a pony project. You're taking commissions for artwork. Or you want to get yourself seen and want to do more. We also offer the chance to be able to put up a banner in the convention hall that will be there throughout the convention from start to finish, two feet by six feet. Um, for those of you in Southeast Asia, 75 cm by 90 cm mm-hmm. kind of thing, because <laughs> America! Right. Yeah, yeah. But still, <laughs> right. so basically I could just say, hey, here's my money, uh, advertise for me. Yeah, the, the NBA show wants to put up a banner there, Yay. kind of thing. Or anyone who wants to see, you, you can basically anything within limits, of course. Like advertise your commissions. You can even, you know, if you want to do something really silly, like wish someone a happy birthday. Yeah, get creative with it. And it's one hundred and fifty dollars. It's a lot of money. We know it's quite steep, but for that, you will be able to get not just a banner. You will have your ticket pre-booked as well. So if you Finally, suddenly, out of the blue, can make it, you're more than welcome. So, wait, uh, ticket for BronyCon was $70, right? Correct. And mm-hmm. for an extra, what, uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 80. Yeah. For another extra 80, you get advertising for free too? Uh, you just said $70 for advertising for free, what the heck? Sorry, uh, 80. <laughs> you said 80 for another extra 80. No. Yeah, you get you, for yeah, an extra eighty, free. you get advertising. It's technically, not for free because you're already paying well, for it. Technically, because yeah, if, you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. But yeah, everything in. It's not like you have to print. We'll print your banner for you. Ah, that's cool. So mm-hmm. even if people, let's say, like Silver Quill, couldn't make it, he could just say, "Hey, I need more viewers. Do this for me." Yeah, we'll be more than happy to put it up. I mean, once again, as long as within. It's within uh, limits and, you know, it contains stuff that is safe to be at a family-friendly convention. Mm-hmm. Mm. Then the, the other thing is that we also want to value every single person who contributes to this because contributing to a convention like this that we want to, you know, see happening is that we also want to give back and say that this is a convention by Southeast Asia and everyone else who helped. So if you pre-book your ticket currently as i said 30 dollars but if you pre-book with a special link in the show notes that i'm going to be putting in there in a moment Mm -hmm. you'll be able to pre-book for 25 dollars Ooh, so that's what a five ten dollars discount five dollars that's a five dollars so So yeah just for all of you listening to this right now five dollars discount to pre-book your ticket once again if you can't make it but you still want to help out if you pre-book a ticket, regardless whether you're there or not, we will print your name on a banner that will be placed at the back of the hall. A big banner with every single supporter's name on it. Yay! This sounds cool. Because everyone, everyone who contributes to this deserves to have something, you know, not just something they can take back in terms of, hey, I got this ticket and I'm going for this con, but hey, you can take a picture next to your name on the wall. We're just showing that, yeah, you know, you're, you pretty much go down in history as someone who did their part. To make a dream come true. And that's something worth it. Mm-hmm. Would you like me to go through a couple of other perks? or? All right. And uh, for those of you who, you know, we compare at other conventions and how they charge. Now, we're not trying to say that we're being, we, we want to beat them in price. We're not, that's not our objective to beat other conventions in price. But we want to look at how much we can bring it down for this audience in a, in a especially in a, region of developing countries but if you want to contribute something to the tune of let's say a thousand dollars uh we have perks that bring you even more and what we want to do is we want to try and make this convention experience a lot more comfortable some people will say this is for westerners and target it's partly the case because this is you know for this kind of money you won't get this experience in the west mm-hmm. so st- if you contribute uh at least six hundred dollars we will arrange for you to be driven to to and from the convention venue from your hotel or your place of residence as long as within 30 kilometers of the convention venue and uh we will have your meals purchased delivered to you at the convention so you know you don't have to leave the convention hall if you don't want to. you can be there and get to immerse yourself because one of the things about going to BronyCon is that, you know, we sit in the hotel room and uh, I'm there with my silly little canned food or something like that. And I'm we're eating, we're having our lunch. But the one thing that's running through my head is I'm eating right now, but there's a panel going on that I'm missing. 
And this is something that I feel that made me really tense. Um, Charlie, I don't know. Did you feel like this? Okay, usually I pre-plan exactly what I want to see. Um, uh, unfortunately, because there's so much going on, I couldn't go for all of them. But I did manage to get most of them. So um, for me, it's like, it's it's okay. You Guilt cannot, free. No, you can't just, you can't do everything. You know, you want to try, but uh, you also have to pace yourself. So that you don't overstretch yourself and at the end of the day, uh, you don't enjoy it yeah. because, because, you know, you've overexerted yourself. You've got a headache and then you've got to rest and, uh, you know, it ends up worse. So we, we, we're trying not to say to avoid this, but to bring it down because, you know, it will, it will overwhelm you and the convention hall we're holding in is not a hotel. There's no like attached restaurant or somewhere you can go straight away and just grab food. So in a sense, we want to try and bridge that gap. Mm, yeah. And most conventions I went to, they didn't really had close by food, so that's going to be a problem. It is. I mean, the, the there's food nearby uh, Prince Viwat Hall. There's plenty of roadside sellers. You know, but that's not, if that's not your taste, we'll get something delivered to you. And um, granted, our regional audience, especially for for Southeast Asia, um, we will provide options for halal and vegetarian dishes as well. So if you're gonna have, if you think you're gonna have trouble finding these things, we'll help you out. Mm, sounds good. And the higher up you go, uh, our highest perk is thousand five hundred US dollars, which is about the same as you know the high level perks at a lot of the Western conventions. Uh, we will provide if you pay a thousand five hundred dollars, we will provide you the four day three night stay at a hotel. Nice. And we will make sure that it's a five star hotel as rated by Booking dot com. <laughs> nice. So basically, you will get the food delivered to you, the person driving you, and you get a hotel room. Nice. Basically, you'll be a princess for a weekend, kind of thing. Yeah. Yay! Who wants to be Princess Derpy? <laughs> it doesn't Did come in muffins, wings? though. I could think about it. How about wings? Do we get wings? You need to take a pair of wings. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. But you know, ball stocks last. You know. <laughs> True. Still, uh, that sounds awesome. I mean, uh, you explaining this to me like it's already hype, but I, I think the best solution is, or the best way for people to really look at it and understand is through a YouTube video of its own. Yeah, and we have a convention trailer on our Indiegogo website, which is, once again, fund. Uh, fund.cponycon.com. We're not going to read the YouTube link to you on the air. It's stupid. Uh, <laughs> And uh, lately, in conjunction with CN PonyCon that's happening in Shanghai mm-hmm. right now, we have released a Chinese trailer as well. We've translated our trailer to Mandarin. Awesome. So the best way for me to say is I'll put everything in the show notes, so click on it. And I'll be sure to put it up front, so this will be the first thing that people see and click. But still, I'll put everything into said show notes, so people will just click on links, I hope, and just, you know read it out or just try and open up to the idea of a Southeast Asia Bruni convention? Um, it's more than just open up because there has been so much talk about a sea pony con, a, a, a pony convention for Southeast Asia. And now we've, one of the things that I said at when I reached Baltimore is that the dreaming ends and the dream, the dream begins. From a person who does a lot of Bruni work, it's not easy. And it takes a lot of hard work and dedication to make something happen, even though if people don't believe in it. I just say, just keep doing it until it happens. And you then have done it with uh, the Friendship Express. And I believe that this convention, CPonyCon, you can do it. I And I'm, I'm glad you believe in it. I'm very, very proud to hear that. So... Let's do this! Yay! <laughs> if not, we're gonna cry in Thailand and eat at Family Mart. Yoohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Family Mart food is good, okay? I, I, yeah, it's good, man. I'm not doubting it. I'm not doubting it. It's all good. <laughs> Amazing food. Yes. But anyway, um, if you guys have any concerns, questions, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dbshow at gmail.com. Uh, if you guys want to reach us on Twitter, the show account is at the MBS show. As for me, I'm at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about twice food and whatever tickles my fancy. And tickling my fancy is this. I want this. I want this to happen. I want to go there. I want to go to Thailand. <laughs> and then well, Thailand's always open. <laughs> well, true, but I want to go there for a reason. And said reason is pony conventions. Yay! <laughs> and what about you, Dan? 
uh, you can reach me on Twitter at Saint Pinky at S T P I N K I E. Um, I don't deviant art, but you can look me up there if you want. Same thing. Um, basically, yeah, you can follow me there. If you want updates from C Ponycon, there is at C Ponycon on Twitter. Just follow, just look for C Ponycon, S E A P O N Y C O N. It's not that hard to spell. <laughs> uh, and um, since we mentioned the Friendship Express earlier, just spell Friendship Express without any vowels and cut the last <laughs> S. So F R N D S H P X P R S. What? Purple Tinker was impressed. <laughs> oh, and still, uh, I'll be at that one. I'll, I'll be at the Friendship Express doing something. I'm not sure, but I'll be there doing something. Mm, cool. Mm-hmm. And what about you, Doc? Uh, you can reach me at Twitter uh, handle at D R C X Y. All righty then. Any- mm-hmm. And just before, mm-hmm. just before that, like, if you have something to say, something to suggest, something you want to do, and 140 characters just doesn't cut it, hit me up, Daniel at cponycon.com. D-A-N-I-E-L at cponycon.com. Yay, mm-hmm. they'll be all in the show notes. Mm-hmm. Uh- and, yeah, as you can tell from the email, go to cponycon.com. We've got an elaborate list of FAQs if you want to find out more about the convention, and also ways you can reach us and hang out with us. And, um... I'm still pretty new to this system, but we are, we have a Discord group as well, oh. so if you want to join in the CPonyCon Discord group, I can try and make a link that will work. I'm not so <laughs> sure how these things work. <laughs> but yeah, I'll send a link to Norman to put in the show notes. I, I'll, when I put it in the show notes. And also, if you can't reach it, you can always- Test it first. <laughs> you can always email Dan complaining about it. It's not working. Yeah, but, I mean, we're Southeast Asians. We love complaining. <laughs> true that, true that. But still, I, I hope this works for you and I hope uh, the convention works. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also, like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyvilLife.com. And also, be sure to check out the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and also Stitcher Radio. On that show, Silver Quill and Sapphire Hot Songs join me in reviewing the MLP episode and comics. You can see a different side of them from their regular brony review style on the YouTubes. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. Wait, one last oh. thing. In from, I mean, we're recording right now. It is Sunday night, 1.30 a.m. GMT plus 8 in 7 hours. China's very first pony convention will be kicking off. Ooh. And I know this podcast is going to come out after that, but I'd like to wish them all the best. Yay, good luck. Woo! Yay! China, a country is about to see its very first pony convention, even though... They've you know, got a giant firewall. But they've yet got they a giant firewall. Connect. No YouTube, no Facebook, no EQD. Despite that, they have a convention running. You know what? Nobody can stop the derp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but good luck. Good luck, Shanghai. Mm-hmm. I wish I was there. Yep. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been Daniel Anthony. I've been Charlie. And we'll guys catch you next week with another amazing episode of the MBS show. Probably with more convention talks. I can't wait. Probably I'll be at one. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> anyway, yes. see ya. Come for cons. Bye-bye. See ya in Bangkok next year. <laughs> okay, bye-bye.